These two switches have lots of ports and they're cheap. One of them has 16 ports of two and a half gig ethernet, two ports of SFP plus 10 gig ethernet, and it's very low power. The other switch has 24 ports of two and a half gig ethernet, two SFP plus ports, and uses a little bit more power, but has more capability. But one of these switches is not what it seems inside. In fact, the construction completely surprised us when we opened it up. With that, we have a ton to get into today, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH, and these are some amazing switches. However, some of them are not what they seem. Now, just to give you a little bit of background, if you don't know this on STH, we have an entire section, and we've been doing for years, these famous low-cost two and a half gig ethernet switches. But over time, folks have asked us, for a number of larger switches than the typical four port, five port, six port, eight port models that we've reviewed previously. Now we've done a number of those reviews, but there are a new class of low cost 16 port and 24 port switches on the market that I thought it was worth taking a look at. Now, originally we were just gonna do this as a main site review series where we're gonna go and have these switches, add them to our ultimate buyer's guide where you can find many dozen of these fanless low cost switches that we've reviewed. But when we started opening these switches up, what we found was that there's a number of things in here that are, I guess, good and a number of things that, well, let's just put it this way. When we show you the inside of the 16 port switch, there are some folks in the comments that are gonna be like, oh, that's great. On the other hand, there are gonna be some folks that are gonna be like, hey, what the heck is going on here? Uh, I would never buy that thing. So there are, I think, gonna be a lot of opinions. Please share those down in the comments. And hey guys, real quick, I just wanna say thank you to all the STH YouTube members who allow us to go and buy these switches so that way we can bring you these great videos. If you wanna help, you can join down below. Also, hey, we just hit one million subscribers. Thank you guys so much for making that possible. One thing I will tell you is, especially on our networking side on STH, we are gonna do a massive upgrade. We have a new 51.2 two terabit switch, which is 64 ports of 800 gig, which is this NVIDIA switch in front of me. And we have some other fun things like this behind me, which is a project that uh, is definitely a giant, very, very expensive project, but we have a new Keysight SciPerf tool that we're gonna be using to test a lot of the new, like especially like firewalls and other appliances. We've actually gotten over 1.6 terabits per second of load generation on this. But you can do so much more, like for example, simulating real traffic flows like Google Chrome, having Airbnb up, Reddit up, League of Legends, this one has Facebook, a whole bunch of different things that we can actually go and vary the number of users and try hitting throughputs and concurrency and all that kind of stuff. The new tool that we have is just unbelievable. You can't wait to see this thing. Uh, stay tuned for more of that. With that, thank you again so much for making this possible. We're working hard to up our game, but we'll, let's get back to it. Now, as a quick game plan for today, I think what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to the 16 port models because I think they're gonna be the most controversial. Then we're gonna go look at these 24 port switches and show what makes these actually pretty darn good. And then we're gonna do a quick lightning round. We're just gonna go mention these little QNAP switches, which are not fanless, but they are a little bit faster. And I think a lot of folks that are looking for these higher end switches, they may want something like these instead. And so I figured we're just gonna go really quickly at the end and do them in a lightning round. So that's a lot to cover. Let's get to the hardware. Okay, so first things first, I wanna talk about the three switches that we have stacked right here. Now you'll see that these first two switches are Vimin switches. And then the one below that is a Giga Plus switch. Now the bottom Giga Plus switch we've already reviewed on the STH main site. Now this first switch here is the Vimin VM S251602, 16 ports of two and a half gig plus two SFP plus ports. And that's kind of, I think how they're getting this there. By the way, Vimin, like what the heck? I think that's how we're pronouncing it. I'd love to know how you're pronouncing it. I'm pronouncing it like I went to an all boys high school where we did not have Vimin as students. I mean, hey guys, I love me a $39, four port, two and a half gig, two 10 gig switch as much as the next person. But on the other hand, some folks just need more ports. And so if you need more ports, you can of course buy more switches and then use a lot of cables, or you can just buy a bigger switch, which is really what this is. And just giving you some idea, this switch generally is in maybe that 160 to $180 range. We'll of course have links. So if you wanna go purchase these, we'll have affiliate links down in the description. Now that's not a super expensive switch. And one of the best things about it is also just the way that you hook up the switch, right? You have a single switch, 16 ports of two and a half gig. You have your two SFP plus ports. And then when you get to the rear of the thing, you see that we have an AC input port here. Now this AC input port is important because we don't have an external power brick. We'll open one of these up in a little bit, but another nice thing about this is that when you get inside, you'll see that there's no fan. So this is a fanless switch, which makes it silent. Now, of course, this is much more expensive than the four port switches that are 40 bucks, 
But on the other hand, this is a 16 port switch. So of course you're gonna spend more because it's a larger switch. But something happened when we were on the site, we saw a little slider and we said, hey, look, there's a PoE version. And that is the next switch that we wanna look at. Now, the next switch in the middle of the stack here is the Vimin VM S251602 P. And that P means that we have power over ethernet. And I think for a lot of folks, having that PoE capability is super important because it allows you to just go and have it one network switch that can power your workstations, maybe your NAS devices, some test systems, even things like Wi-Fi APs, things like these, uh, you know, like security cameras or something like that. And so there are a number of reasons that, I, you know, if you just want to have one switch, then I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, I wanted to see what kind of PoE we had. So we took out our fancy Fluke PoE tester and we found that we have a class 4 PoE at 25 and a half watts showing up on the Fluke device, which is a very good tester for PoE. Now, the Fluke device works very well when things are following standards. It does not work very well when things are doing willy-nilly things with PoE. And so I just would say that, you know, one of the important things when you see, especially these low-cost switches, is that you want to make sure that you have like some kind of useful PoE. And that's really what we're testing with this Fluke meter down here. One thing that I think stinks a little bit is that this doesn't have a PoE indicator on the front. It just, you plug it in and then you kind of have to hope that something works. The other thing is that since these are unmanaged switches, we don't get the ability to go into a management interface and power cycle things. So like if, for example, your PoE camera froze, you can't go into a management interface and just reset it manually. You're gonna have to like probably go out and go to the switch and like unplug it or something like that. Okay, now the third switch is this Giga Plus switch. This is a very interesting switch. And now we're gonna get to why I think a lot of folks are gonna find these to be absolutely fascinating. One of the cool things is that Giga Plus is usually very competitive when it comes to the pricing of these switches, and they tend to be a dollar or two more, depending on the day, lower than the Vimin switches, but that can really just depend. So I would definitely look at both of them. As you can see from these front faceplates, they're essentially the exact same switch with just a different brand on them. But let's get to one of the more fun things, which is really this claim that it has 120 gigabits per second of switching capacity. So let's start talking about how these things are made inside. So this is just one of the Giga Plus ones. Again, the Vimin one is exactly the same. The PoE Vimin one, of course, has that extra PoE circuitry. All these have internal power supplies. But what I'm gonna show you is inside one of these switches. Now, what you'll see is here's our little internal power supply on the non-PoE version. And then we have this little switchboard. This switchboard, however, is made completely differently from how I think a lot of folks would expect it to be made. What you'll see is we have these two SFP plus cages, and then we have our 16 ports of two and a half gig ethernet. Now, there is something else going on here that I think is super important that you might be able to see from the PCB. And that is there are these four heat sinks. Now, one of the challenges is that all these switches, we've been having a real tough time. They all end up getting cemented, these heat sinks, onto the chips. And so if we take them off, then we end up destroying the switch. I don't know if we really want to do that. But I think I know what's going on and how they're getting 120 gigabits per second of switching capacity. Okay, so let me show you what's really going on inside these switches and how they're able to make them so low cost. Cost. So what you're going to see is that we have four of these little switch chips here. And what I think they are is that these are Realtek. Realtek has a 30 gigabit switch chip that can take four two and a half gig ports and, you know, have those, but then also give you two links to 10 gig. Now you'll have seen these because if you've seen our four port two and a half gig plus two port SFP plus switch reviews, those are literally, that's literally the chip, right? That is the Realtek chip. It's 30 gigabits per second to 10 gig ports, plus it has four two and a half gig. So using that as a mental model, you can actually see what's going on in the switch because what you'll see is that we have one switch chip, then we have four ports of two and a half gig ethernet. And so Rohit and I had this idea like, hey, maybe there's something funky going on here. What you'll see in the diagram is that the two middle switch chips have their two and a half gig ports, which are directly connected. And then their two 10 gig links are each connected to their neighbors. But when we get to the outer switch chips, they only have one neighbor next to them. So instead the SFP plus 10 gig ports, those come off the edges or off the sides of the other switch chips. And you can actually see this in the PCB traces where we have the inner SFP plus port go to the end over here. And then we have this other SFP plus port on the edge, go all the way around to the other side where we have another switch chip over here. But it makes sense that if these are 30 gigabit per second switch chips that you could construct it this way. And it also makes sense because if you have four 30 gigabit switch chips, four times 30 is 120 gigabits per second, which is exactly what they're advertising on Amazon. 
except for the fact that uh, you know this is not like a normal like how you would want necessarily a high performance switch to be architected. And of course the PoE version is basically that with the extra PoE circuitry, but there are some implications of this. And so what I think these guys are doing is they're taking those four plus two port, you know, Realtek switch chips that are 30 gigabits per second, super inexpensive, $39. And this is the switch equivalent to taking SFP plus GAX and just stringing them between, taking three of them and stringing four of those together. You still get the two SFP plus ports on the end. You still get all of your downstream two and a half gig ethernet ports, but instead of having four of those $40 devices, you instead have 160 something dollar device. Of course, there are some other benefits of that. When we get to the power consumption, you'll see that these switches tend to use about 3.3 watts completely idle. When we connect a single two and a half gig ethernet port, we get about four watts, which is also pretty low. And then when we connect a SFP plus to 10 G base T adapter, we go to about five Watts. And guys, this really brings me to the point of why it's important that we go and get all these switches, take them apart, see how they work, see if there's differences between them. Because if you were just buying these on Amazon, you would have no idea of what the heck is even going on here. Okay, so we've gone through the 16 port switches. Let's go do the 24 port switches because I think they're a little bit more interesting. And by the way, I'm saying 16 and 24 because I'm using the two and a half gig. Of course, there are always two SFP plus that you can add onto that. So you'll see these as 18 port and 26 port switches, but I'm just using the two and a half gig just to make life easy. Now we've already done a review of the MokerLink 24 port unit that's down below. The cost for these switches is usually about $250, $260. So there is a very large, relatively priced premium for getting those additional eight ports. At the same time, we now have 24 ports, which is of course more. We also have our two SFP plus ports. When we get inside the switches, you're going to see some things that are similar. Like we have a internal power supply. We also do not have fans in this switch, which is always nice, but the construction is very different for a key reason. Now I've taken the heatsink off, but you'll see that this is a Realtek RTL 9302D, which is actually a switch chip that has 24 ports of two and a half gig ethernet plus two 10 gig uplink ports all on the same switch chip. And what that practically means is that we get much better performance, especially going across the switch when we load it up, we get better performance on the 24 port models than we do on the 16 port models, especially if you're doing things like going SFP plus to SFP plus. And just real quick, I did take this apart, but the Giga Plus also comes with rack ears, just like the Mocha Link. The boards inside are actually a little bit different. So they're not the same like we saw with the Giga Plus and the Vimin over here. There are different boards, but they are constructed with the same chipsets. And they're also fanless and they have, you know, internal power supplies. So they're actually very similar. I don't necessarily know which one I would prefer, but I would just say that, you know, to me, they're unmanaged, very similar. I might go with the one that is the least expensive on that given day. Now, in terms of power consumption, these 24 port switches also use a lot more power. So one of the other nice things about the 16 port design, aside from how it's actually constructed, but it does have lower power. So if power is very expensive where you are, that's something to keep in mind. On the other hand, if you look at the 24 port model, instead of like 3.3 watts at idle, we're going up to about 9.3 watts with nothing plugged in. So an additional six watts, just nothing plugged in. When we added that extra two and a half gig ethernet port, we're at about 10.3 watts. So we added an incremental one watt for a two and a half gig ethernet port on the 24 port, whereas there's only about 0.7 watts on the 16 port. So again, even every time you add a port into it, we're seeing higher power consumption or a little extra additional power consumption on the 24 port versus 16 port models. And then when we added that SFP plus to 10 G base T adapter, we got up to 11.3 Watts, which brought us to, you know, an incremental two Watts. So it does seem like the 24 port model just in general is using more power. Again, it is also fanless, but um, you know, it, it uses more power. Now, hey guys, I know a lot of folks are gonna watch these and say like, hey, if I have a bigger switch, I might want more 10 gig, or I might want 25 gig these days, 100 gig. I might also want 10 G base T instead of SFP plus, I get it. You also may want management and all that kind of stuff. And we just were looking at these switches. I just wanna go over really, really quickly here. These are both switches from QNAP. Now this top switch is a QNAP QSW M3216R. R8S8T, which is an eight port SFP plus and also eight port 10 G base T. So you get 16 ports of 10 gig. You also get some pretty basic management features, but it's, it's okay, get a web UI and all that kind of stuff. So not necessarily, you know, you're not, you're not gonna be running a, a 
mainframe for a bank off of this. But on the other hand, if you just have an edge use case where you need, need 10 gig, sure, this is great. There's a unmanaged version of this that we don't have that's a little bit less expensive, something like $50 less. This is just around $600 for the Switch. And so overall, you know, if you need that 10 G base T, you need more SFP plus, or you have a bunch of these little devices that you want to start connecting together, it's actually better to go through a Switch like this. Now, of course, this is a higher performance switch, so I think it's more like 17 watts on idle. The noise on it is actually quite good. It's somewhere in our 34 dBA noise floor studio when we don't have the giant air conditioning going on. Uh, it's something like 37 dBA, 36 dBA, somewhere in there. So it's a relatively quiet switch, even for a 10 G base T switch. It also does multi gig, so if you have like one or two, two and a half gig devices, you can of course hook those up, no problem. The other one though, that I was not really expecting to become such a big fan of, but I have become a fan of recently is this one, which is the QNAP QSW M7308R. I think there's like a four X at the end. Now, what this is, is four ports of 100 gigabit ethernet. Plus you get an additional eight ports of 25 gig ethernet. And that gives us about 600 gigabits per second of total network capacity on here. Now I know a lot of folks are gonna say, hey, you know, why do I want that? I just want 10 gig and SFP plus and all that stuff. Well, if you're already adding NICs these days to a system and you're adding SFP plus NICs, the SFP 28 NICs that have 25 gig ethernet, frankly, a ConnectX 4 LX is not that expensive to add. And so, you know, going up from 10 gig to 25 gig is a pretty huge performance jump, especially if you're doing something like storage. And so, you know, I, I personally really think that a lot of folks, this is a interesting option for. Also, we're starting to see more like video production boxes and stuff with 100 gig ethernet and 100 gig ethernet, remember on a PCI Gen 5 is only a by four link. And frankly, if you can cool the NICs, the 100 gig ethernet is pretty inexpensive these days. And it's pretty easy to add to a lot of systems so long as you have the NICs and card slots available to go do it. So for higher end workstations, also video production gear, I think like this makes a lot of sense. And hey guys, look, I get it. A lot of folks are gonna be like, hey, that's way more expensive, it's silly and all that kind of stuff. True, except if you look at higher end networking, something you'll see is that like these switches, they may look like a good value at 24 ports, 250, 260 bucks. You get, uh, you know, a total of like 60, 60 gigabits per second for the two and a half gig plus another 20 for the SFP plus, which gives you 80 gigabits per second of network capacity for about $250. But on the other hand, this is 600 for a thousand. So on a dollar per gigabit per second basis, these types of switches are now accessible. They're quiet, relatively low power. You can stick them desktop, their desk side even. And you know, your price per gigabit actually goes down by quite a bit. Now, if you guys wanna see full videos on those, we can of course do them, let me know down in the comments. But I just thought, let's just do them very quickly and give them a little cameo here. Okay, now in all these videos, you know, I love to have key lessons learned. Now, what did we learn from going and doing this entire exercise? I think we learned a couple of really important things. One, I think these 24 port switches are actually pretty decent. We looked at a T TP-Link switch that had 24 ports of two and a half gig ethernet plus eight ports of SFP plus previously. And that actually has worked really well. We got a couple of those, but they were imported from AliExpress from China pre-tariffs and like, you know, it was, it was a different world back then. And so, you know, those were more expensive. They'd be way more expensive today. And these might be an option for you if you're looking for that type of switch, but you're also looking for something that you can get relatively inexpensively. And also that you can get on Amazon overnighted rather than having to wait a couple weeks. These 16 port switches, I mean, guys, I'd love to hear what you think, but to me, we, we definitely noticed the performance thing where we're just kind of doing some testing and we that's when we really looked at it. We opened them up and we said, okay, oh, wait, well, how, how are these things made? What's going on? And we figured it out. For some folks, if you just have a bunch of devices that you need to plug in, maybe you have a couple of like, uh, you know, cameras or something like that that are just not gonna use even one gigabit per second, but you don't want to have multiple switches, then I totally get a switch like this. And in fact, I think that it can make a lot of sense for folks. Like if you have Raspberry Pis and stuff, and you just want to have a little cluster or, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, you want two and a half gig ethernet because maybe you have a couple of two and a half gig ethernet devices, maybe a workstation or two, and then maybe you have a NAS that's 10 gig or like whatever the heck's going on, guys. Maybe you just need more ports and you're like, I don't necessarily need everything to work at 100% all the time, but I do need a little bit more performance than a one gig switch would give me. Then I think that these things are really Really nice they also have low power on the other hand if you are performance oriented don't fall into the trap of getting these and thinking that you're going to get a lot of performance off of these switches just because well they're made in a kind of funky way but again i'd love to hear your feedback on this because i think that's really important for how we do these reviews in the future and hey if you did like this video why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues but also give it a like click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos as always thanks for watching and have an awesome day